Hello everyone, this is Farid Khan and in this episode of Unpopular Opinions on Zalmi TV, I am joined by Nawab Hassan Hussain Qureshi, who is a sports analyst. Qureshi sahab, how are you doing? Alhamdulillah Farid ji, always good to be here with you. So we have our calculators out once again, we needed three results to go our way on Sunday. We got two of them done, but the last one unfortunately did not go our way. So are you still optimistic, still thinking about Pakistan's chances or is it done for you now? I think it's so much easier not to be optimistic. I think it's so much easier to go in without expectations. Uh, anything can happen. Uh, of course, uh, you and I both know that Pakistanis are uh, not just have the calculators out, but have the prayer mats out also. Lots of conspiracy theories going on also. But I think at the same time, you know, uh, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. What Pakistan need to do is make sure they play really good cricket in their next two games. The rest is out of their control. I think it's easier said than done as Pakistanis we are always looking towards our team to do well and also towards other teams to do well for us. So India, we were expecting them to defeat South Africa, pretty similar situation from 2019 when we wanted them to beat England, but that did not happen either. No, I think at that time there was a lot of uh, controversy with the 2019 loss for sure. I just think South Africa played the better cricket. Uh, against India on the day. Uh, obviously, there will be question marks when you look at India's fielding. Uh, the fact that India was able to take a match this close, yeah. not finish it out against South Africa. But I think South Africa are looking like a tougher team also for EG. I think they're looking like a team that's ready. There's no guarantee we're beating South Africa at the moment either. Uh, but yeah, I think it's just Pakistan cricket will have to accept that not winning against Zimbabwe is what's going to end up costing us. When you're relying on other teams... Uh, in Australia, we have a history of relying on other yeah, teams yeah. and whether to help out uh, doesn't mean it's always going to happen. So we just we just can't do anything but wait. No more 1992 comparisons as you've just mentioned. But see, we lost to India, we lost to Zimbabwe. The Zimbabwe match we shouldn't have lost at any cost because we required 43 of 39 balls. We had seven wickets in hand and we needed four of four balls in the last over two. Was it heartbreaking for you or did the India loss, I guess, play a part in that loss as well against Zimbabwe? No, the Zimbabwe loss is heartbreaking simply because against India, anything can happen. It's a very big game. It's a close game. You shouldn't be losing a game from defending 48 with three overs to go. At the same time, you have to take your hat off to Virat Kohli's performance. So it hurt, but you know that it's India. Against Zimbabwe, it hurt simply because you shouldn't have allowed it to get that far. Fariji, we had them 99 for seven. To allow them to get 123 and then fail to chase it with our batting order, that's just something uh, that will be a big what if that Pakistan would always be thinking about. And if I'm honest with you, if I'm being very honest with you, the performance against the Netherlands is very disappointing also because we should have pushed to win that game within 10 overs. And instead, you know, we're kind of like, oh, I don't want to say scraping over the line, but just, you know, not showing that desire uh, to get things exactly. done early. Yeah. So it, it's been very disappointing so far, for sure. Now we're counting on Bangladesh tomorrow, they play against India, but I saw Shakib's statement, I was reading it and he was not even sure of his team's chances. And do you think Pakistan should really pin their hopes on Bangladesh for tomorrow? No, if you consider the last time they played a World Cup game, Bangladesh managed to lose a game to India that even Pakistan might not have lost. I mean, that was a game that I think has scarred them forever and I don't think honestly uh, that either Bangladesh are on India's level mentally or on their level in terms of skill. So I think if, if India have a horrible game, maybe. But I think Pakistan should not be pinning any hopes on them. And Fariji, if we're going to be pinning our hopes on Holland uh, beating South Africa, then, you know, we should do it in maybe in, in football or, or hockey or something else. I really don't see that happening in the cricket. Again, it comes back to the same thing, doesn't it? Fail to win your own matches. Be forced to rely on others. Anything is a bonus. All we can do is uh, it's the my prayers for pray uh, rain in both games. I was recalling a few incidents. I tweeted about the 2010 World Cup when we needed England's help to go through to the semi-finals after defeating South Africa. And we managed to do that because England won against New Zealand. I think 1992 obviously always comes to mind. Australia needing to beat the West Indies. At that time, having watched so much uh, cricket in Australia and seen how dominant the West Indies were, uh, you didn't think it would happen, especially after Australia had lost to Pakistan. Uh, the game in Adelaide where Pakistan was bowled out for 77 and we were all convinced that we're going to lose only for rain to make sure. And then like you mentioned, obviously 2019 happened after that, 2010 happened after that. I think the 2009 Champions Trophy uh, yeah. happened. But again, it's it's just 
you know, situations where we we're, we're relying on other teams shows that we are not having a good game uh, in that tournament. So, do we even deserve to go through? It all depends on how well we play in our games. I have zero expectations from Bangladesh. And this is not having a go at Bangladesh cricket. I think India are an exceptional side that, I mean, if we can't beat them, yeah. uh, and if we're thinking that, uh, you know, uh, uh, Bangladesh will beat them and, and Zimbabwe will beat them, then we shouldn't be surprised if Bangladesh and Zimbabwe beat us also. So, no, Pakistan has to worry about uh, first playing good cricket themselves. And uh, more than winning, our only hope is weather. True. So, where did it all go wrong for us? We came into the World Cup uh, on the back of a series win, a tri-series win in New Zealand. We were really close against India. We probably should have won against Zimbabwe. So, where did it all go wrong? Was it the middle order or was it the opening stand which could not give us the start that we were expecting them to? I think if we're going to be honest, Fariji, it was all of the things. One of the problems that we had against India also was that we had an expectation from Shaheen Shah Fridi, who was playing after so long, to play the way he did. Where it went wrong for us, honestly, is somehow Virat Kohli managed to hit Haris Rauf for those two sixes. When you and I have both seen recently that Haris has been the best T20 bowler in the world. When that happens, and then the fact that there was the controversy uh, of, the, of the no ball, there was a controversy of the free hit, but it was asking too much of Nawaz to, to do right. that. So, losing when you have 48 to defend of three overs, if Pakistan won in such a situation against India, we would think to ourselves, wow, how has India allowed that? Yeah. Against Zimbabwe, it all went wrong simply because it wasn't just the openers. It was also the middle order. It was also the lower order. Yeah. We panicked under pressure. Uh, easy, I'm sorry, but 123 is an easy total. No disrespect to Zimbabwe. Don't allow them to get that total when you have them 99 for 8, I believe. And don't then fail to chain that, chase that score. So, obviously, when you lose two games and you're only going to be playing five and there's other sides to go through. So, I think where it went and, Fariji, if we're honest, I think our approach was very... Because in the New Zealand games, the last three games, we had a flexible batting order. We changed the bowling around against India back to the same things that have not been working for us. Maybe someone read, read the other day, but for the issue of... It was all but one ball against India and all but one ball against Zimbabwe. It could have been different. True, true. Have we been a bit unlucky? Yes, we've been a bit unlucky. But we've also failed to create any luck for ourselves. Shadab Khan actually had been used as a low-value wicket as well. And people had high hopes from him. He gave us a good start against Zimbabwe. We should have finished that match because we had Shan Sood batting with him. But Shadab has been blamed of not finishing off the matches. Uh, you remember one match against Islamabad United when they played against uh, Lahore Clenders rather. So, Shadab was there and they should have won. They required, I guess, 30 odd runs in the last five overs. Shadab lost his wicket. Obviously, they had Azam Khan, Asif Ali to follow. Not that it was Shadab's fault entirely. But do you think a player who is playing as a low-value wicket, but when he is in a situation where Shadab is most of the times, he should be finishing the matches? Again, if he's got only Taylanders with him, yes, you have that pressure on him. But he's got Shan batting at the other end, who's more than capable. Uh, at that time that he got out, Nawaz was still left to play. Vaseem can definitely bat. Uh, I think a lot of us are doing a, a very big uh, uh, favour to Vaseem, not mentioning how Zimbabwe were able to get so many dot balls past him. True. In fact, if I'm not wrong, Fariji, you would know better than me. I think there were 53 to 54 dot balls against Zimbabwe in the entire game. Yeah, That's yeah. half the overs. Right, so, right. blaming Shadab, who just hit a six and was trying to keep going for it. Uh, and the match that you mentioned in the PSL, if, if Azam and Asif... Two of your biggest hitters are not finishing it off. I don't see how we can blame Shadab. Shadab did his bit. Uh, yes, in an ideal world, you want him to finish games. In an ideal world, you want Shani to finish games also. But they've both got out. But what excuse did Vaseem and Nawaz have uh, when, when Zimbabwe were just ma managing to get... And again, both very good players. Both more than capable. It's just that we didn't take the pressure. And Pakistan cricket, Fariji, is struggling to take on the pressure ever since the 2021 World Cup, yeah. where even against Australia, when it got really tough, we weren't able to do it. So that's something we need to look at. We need to change our approach in pressure situations to become a little bit better at it. I think that's an area where we've been struggling. And I think our strategy doesn't help. You you have a low value. Why wasn't Nawaz used earlier uh, yeah. as a low value wicket? When he did that, uh, if you remember, against New Zealand in the Tri-Series in all three games, including the final. So, I, I, against, uh, against India in the first game, people couldn't believe we didn't go in with four, four spinners, mm -hmm. um, you know. So, 
I think we're not helping ourselves and we need to look at these opportunities that we've had and say we were so close, but we couldn't finish it off. It, it, look, blaming others, sure, it's, it's a short-term fix. Long-term fix, we've got to look to blame ourselves. I guess Barber's captaincy is under the scanner for a long time now. He has been here for a couple of years now. And we lost a few close matches. If we talk about the last World Cup where we lost to Australia, where we should have won, we had them at 90 or for 5 in 13 overs and we made them chase 170. Other than that, we were uh, in a situation we should have won against Sri Lanka in the Asia Cup final. Then we lost two matches on the trot and lost a series against England. It's tough to say if he's been improving, but there's definitely been opportunities to learn, Fareed Zee. There's yeah. been opportunities to see, like you said, the tri-series where we tried the low-value wickets, the flexible batting order worked out for us. Same mistakes going into the next game, not playing the extra spinner, the batting order has been a mistake. Uh, sorry, not playing the extra fast bowler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then playing, bowling the spinners consistently, at a time, not using matchups. These are questions that unfortunately will be raised. When you're winning, you paper over all these questions. If the last ball, Ashwin misses and, you know, we get a bold, uh, nobody's asking these questions. If uh, Nawaz manages to get the ball over the fielder, yeah, nobody yeah. asks these questions. But when the margins are so fine, these questions will be asked. So, I do believe that it's, it's, a, uh, it's a stage now for Babar as a T20 captain, where obviously he's been around for that long. Yeah. I do believe he's a good leader. I do believe he commands absolute respect from his teammates. They look up to him. Uh, I do believe the fans are also very fond of him. But uh, yes, I think that is that one step that we need to move on uh, and, and take. And I think that will only come when we try and change our approach. You and I both saw last time at the World Cup how easily we dismantled India. Uh, and India's approach changed from that World Cup to now. If I'm not wrong, they've won 70 or 80 percent of all their games yeah. since then. But, and they've done it with this attacking approach. They didn't see the Asia Cup as a hindrance. They just said, no, we're going to keep attacking. And uh, let's be honest, Pariji, uh, Surya Kumar Yadav uh, thankfully doesn't perform against Pakistan. Yeah. Yeah. But look at his innings against South Africa. How many of our batsmen would have stood up in that situation and played an innings uh, of, of that uh, caliber? So I think it's important for Babar to now realize that whatever he has been doing has gotten this far. There has to be a change, whether it's more attacking cricket, whether it's using more matchups or whether it's just changing something. I think he's at a crossroads now. Uh, I see him continuing as the captain, but if we want to make it to the next level, something has to change. So both of us believe it's curtains for Pakistan already as far as this tournament is concerned. What does future hold for Babar Azam and for Pakistan? Where do we go from here? It, it all depends on, 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 on how the board want to do it. I don't, I don't believe in, yes, two World Cups not going on to win. But I don't, unless you have a better leadership candidate, are you going to go all out, attack and use a captain like Shadab Khan? Only do it if you're going to do that. If you're going to have a captain like Shadab, but not embrace those things mm. uh, that he would bring in at, at franchise level, at domestic level, <clears throat> there's no point. Uh, obviously, uh, it should not be forgotten that Pakistan are lucky in the sense that at, at uh, PSL level, we've got guys like Mohammad Rizwan who've won uh, the, the uh, Premier, uh, Pakistan Super League. You've got Shaheen Shafridi. But are you burdening them with extra things? Yeah. Is Babar the captain tactically the problem when you consider that Babar the captain as a batsman is so important also? Yeah. So where Pakistan go, Fariji will really depend on the approach we want to take. Do we want to win World Cups? We have to see teams that are winning. Uh, look, Aaron Finch is struggling right now, isn't he? I, I couldn't believe. Temba Bavuma is struggling as well. Yeah. Now, Temba Bavuma is staying. But if his team go on to win the World Cup yeah. because of his incredible pace attack, yeah. and then that, that really hurts you because I think our pace attack is every bit as good as South Africa's. The only problem is, <clears throat> again, someone pointed it out very well last time, we did not bowl short to Zimbabwe at all. South mm. Africa peppered them with the short stuff, didn't yeah. give them that opportunity. So where Pakistan go, it all depends on how we utilize our resources. And at the moment, I don't think we're utilizing them to the best of their ability. That's something we need to do, whether Babar is the captain, Shadab is the captain, anybody else is the captain. If we don't change our approach, Fariji, I, I see this continuing for us. We, we have to treat T20 cricket for what it is, something that is completely different from the rest of cricket and something which has now evolved 
into this game where uh, science and data and matchups are too integral to just go in and say, no, no, I don't feel like using this today. You don't have a choice. You have to stay with the times. Thank you so much, Kreshita, for your time. As they say, it is not over until the fat lady sings. So we do hope Pakistan still have a chance of making the semifinals as unlikely as it sounds. Thank you so much once again. Thank you, sir. May all the fat ladies sing for us. That is all from this episode of Unpopular Opinions on Zalmi TV. This is Farid Khan signing off until the next episode.